On this Andy's Auto Sport Frequently Asked Questions, we're going to fuel your knowledge about STS turbos. Now, we get the question all the time on STS turbos, and today we're doing something a little special. We brought Brett Langford in from STS to answer some of these questions. Brett, one of the questions we get all the time is, if I live in an inclement area where I get a lot of uh, rain or snow, uh, is the remote mount turbo still okay, or do I have any problems with water getting in the system? No. Um, actually, the way our kits are designed, you know, they're they're meant to be put through the ringer. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, everything's enclosed. The air filter's positioned in a specific location to where um, you're not having to worry about, you know, water, snow, mud. Um, they do come with shields that will go over the air filter. Also a metal shield that will protect it on some of our kits. But they are designed, I mean, for a Ford Raptor. You know, guys take these things out and beat the crap out of them. So they've got to be built to, to handle the elements. Well, and one of the really cool things about your kit for your JKs, now it actually runs the air right back up into the factory air box so that if you want to run a snorkel, because a lot of Jeep guys, we take these things underwater to <laughs> gross levels. And uh, so this actually goes right back to the factory air box on this particular kit. Uh, some, so you guys do take special attention on the vehicles that need it. Exactly. Very good. All right, another question I get, oh, we get all the time is, where do we get the clean air? We've just answered part of that, but uh, uh, one of the things that, uh, that happens on these, uh, the air boxes, how do you guys get around that after you remote mount the, the systems? So depending on the vehicle, uh, the model, you know, like on the JK, like we talked about, it's going to be pulling air straight from the factory location. Um, like on the BRZ, it's going to be in the rear of the vehicle, getting more dense air, cooler air. Um, so for the need for an aftermarket intake system, you know, we don't need that. You You're basically I mean? getting a cold air kit when you get the remote mount turbo system because it's going to be in a cooler, denser place than getting air from under the hood anyway. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. Now, another one is, um, what about turbo lag? Now, the turbos are mounted all the way back. People think that the further they are away, that there's going to be more turbo lag. How do you guys address that, or is that a problem? No. And, you know, through the R&D process, uh, when we engineer these kits, they're, they're properly sized. And that's the really cool partnership that we've got with Comp Turbo. They work with us heavily on, on properly sizing the housings, the, the turbine wheels, to make sure that it's, it's efficient, um, it's flowing the right amount of air for the horsepower gain that we're looking for, um, and also to you know, to better increase the fuel economy. Keep, so. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, increase fuel economy as well. Okay, that's cool. And that's all about that research and development and that relationship you guys have. Obviously, making sure you have the right turbo to keep it in that efficiency range for the horsepower that you're wanting for that particular application. Correct. Very good. Okay, now, another one, a question we get all the time, how do we get the oil to return back to the oil pan? Um, uh, turbos, most turbos are... Um, have to have an oil feed line, a uh, supply line, and then that oil has to go back. Normally, on normal systems, the reason the turbos are mounted so high is it's a gravity, it, it goes back down by gravity. How do your oiled systems work? So what happens, the motor, you know, obviously shoving the oil back to the, the turbo, and then with our patented scavenge system, pulls the oil from the turbo and then sends it back to the motor. Um, you know, that's a nice thing about our, our systems is we don't have to tap the oil pan. We put it right back into the valve cover. Um, so, it, you know, eliminates any problems, you know, with dealing with the, the oil pan. Having done several of these kits, I can tell you that is absolutely a great way to do it. I, it's really difficult to tap into that pan even if you take it off or you get all that metal down. You don't have to worry about that because you're doing yep. it through the valve cover. Now, another really cool thing that you guys have, one of the upgrades, and we're going to talk about that for a second, you guys have an oilless turbo now, too. Uh, how do you guys like those? Love it. So far, you know, we've had really good, really good luck with them. I have a kit on my my challenger my personal vehicle mm -hmm. um and they come online really hard you know there there may be a little bit of a stigma out there with some of our past kits sure. older oil pumps um that could go out you know we've, sure. we, they do it, it happens parts um, fail they do you know hundred thousand you know, the more you use something it's they're all consumables. wears out Absolutely, they're all consumable. So we, we did rebuild the, the pumps about a year, year and a half ago mm -hmm. um, to make them a lot better. Um, but this oilless option is a, is a really nice feature because if somebody has that feeling, you know, you don't have to worry about that because there's no, there, those variables aren't in the system right. anymore. Now, and that's an upgrade for any one of your systems. You can get any of those systems. You can upgrade to the oilless turbos. Correct. Fantastic. All right. Um, what about fuel economy? Um, we get uh, the question all the time, is this going to hurt my fuel economy? 
Uh, depends on how heavy your foot is, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, there's a direct correlation to your right foot and fuel economy for sure. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're keeping, keeping your foot out of it and you're just in vacuum, you know, you're going to get a lot better fuel economy. Um, we typically tell people between 10 and 20 percent, but that's all dependent, you know, on the driving, driving style. For exactly. Sure. And one of the things, I, again, I've installed several of these kits and we're seeing about that 10 to 15 percent uh, increase in fuel economy without a problem when you just drive normally. Mm -hmm. Another question we get is what about uh, the inner cooler and uh, the piping? Do you lose boost when you have such long intercooler tubes? People are afraid that they're going to lose boost going to that inner cooler. Um, you know, not really. A lot of people, like you said, do think that uh, a substantial decrease in pressure, but there's really not. Um, you know, as soon as you turn the car, that compressor wheel is already starting to spin and, and charge the charge pipes. Um, there may be a half pound drop, but that's, you know, that's some of the things that we're testing here on the BRZ itself, you know. Well, and even that half and, pound of, of loss, you're going to lose, you're going to lose some of that boost with an intercooler anyway, because it's actually, it's actually making a cooler, denser charge. So exactly. basically what's happening is because you've got that long tube, some of that heat actually dissipates in the tube. Uh, that may be where that loss is, where that uh, pressure loss is, but that's not a problem because you're actually cooling off the, and making a denser charge anyway. Yeah, and that's, you know, going back to the engineering of these systems is the piping size and, you know, making sure everything's working properly. Sure. Okay. Now, what kind of horsepower can we expect out of an STS kit? Now, I know you have them for a, uh, a <laughs> variety of different sizes. For example, if uh, you just because you have a kit that has... Uh, uh, 750 horsepower, you can upgrade the turbos and make more horsepower. But what can you expect uh, on an average kit that's designed correctly, properly sized, uh, like how much horsepower per pound of boost? Um, you know, it does. De it depends on the motor itself. Sure. You know, obviously the bigger motors are pushing more air. Um, mm -hmm. But typically, you know, we see anywhere from 20 to 30... 20, I'd say 20 to 25 horsepower per pound of boost. Okay. Um, that's a fairly safe, conservative number, but there's, you know, our Corvette kits produce a lot more than that. <laughs> well, and I, and I know so. that that's all dependent on the engine and efficiencies of engines, too. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our BRZ here, this thing comes with, you know, over 12 to 1 compression. Mm -hmm. So uh, adding a bunch of boost to this is kind of dangerous. You guys have taken all that, uh, those problems out of that. But obviously, this engine is working very efficiently already. So you're probably not going to see that 25 to 30 pounds uh, or 30 horsepower per pound of boost on this car. No, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit less. Um, you know, we're, we're anticipating anywhere 13 to 15 horsepower per pound of boost okay. on, on this specific car. And we're still testing, you know, that obviously, but obviously you have to have safe tune-ups for everybody too. So that's yep. kind of the, that's kind of the deal there too. And also, uh, one of the things is let's say we buy a turbo kit and down the road, we went ahead and upgraded the engine. What does it take to upgrade the system? Uh, you can just we can order new turbos from you and, and upgrade that system. You guys have all those available, all the upgrades. Good question. Yeah, typically, you know, when we when we sell these kits, we tr we talk to the customer about their end goal, um, and that's a nice thing about uh, you know getting it through you guys here mm -hmm. at Andes um, or us is you know we can supply a turbo that's capable of a ton of horsepower. You know, you may not see that right off the bat. Um, but it allows you to grow into it without having to dump, you know, two, three thousand dollars later down the road. So it helps save some money, you know, to do it up front. But yeah, you know, we can upgrade the, the turbo, charge pipes, you know, depending on the vehicle um, to, to help gain a lot more horsepower. Very good. Very good. Brett, we appreciate you coming in today. Thank you so much uh, for bringing And we've got a couple of great little cars here to, Thank you. to have in the background, too. We hope we fueled your knowledge today and answered some of these questions for you. And we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Frequently Asked Questions.